Today we are filming another Celsius video going over example number two in the Coinly article that I helped author uh, not too long ago. And then we will also be discussing a different approach, a, a slightly less conservative approach to what I had authored initially. Um, this is just for those that are willing to take a little bit more risk uh, you know, in their, their calculation here. Uh, obviously the IRS has not talked too much about this specific case, so it's hard to say what will and won't be accepted, but essentially the long story short is that we would only be allocating to the expected distributions and not allocating cost basis to the likely unrecoverable category. Um, essentially what this does is it allows you to take more loss or less of a gain this year, and then um, if you receive anything beyond what was initially expected, that would just be uh, treated as ordinary income. So we'll get into that today, stay tuned. So if you recall from the first video, uh, hopefully this scenario maybe looks a little familiar. We are just changing up some of the numbers to do example number two in the Coinly article. If you haven't checked out that article, definitely go give it a read. There's a written, uh, there is a written uh, you know, guide exactly how to do this calculation, uh, going over both example number one and example number two. So the scenario here is that you lost 0.25 Bitcoin, 2.5 Ethereum, and 50,000 USDC. Using the petition prices at that time, which you know, for all the assets on Celsius, we have that listed out in the article, we are able to calculate our claim value. And it's pretty simple. It's just you know, these numbers multiplied by each other, right? Equals this. And then on that note, so we get the, the total claim. We sum these up. But as we mentioned, you have a 5% markup unless you specifically opted out of the class settlement claim. If you did not do that or you don't know what I'm talking about, then this 5% applies to you. Uh, the next would be to determine your cost basis. So this is just what we saw in the example here. Uh, you know, say we went through and we figured out, okay, on that 0.25 Bitcoin, we had a $2,500 cost basis. On the Ethereum, we had 1,250 cost basis. And then the USDC, of course, is pegged to the dollar. So we had a $50,000 cost basis. So we are left with a total cost basis of 53,750 and then a total claim of 60,575. So one thing I wanna point out here is that if it weren't for the like kind distributions, this would actually be a gain scenario because the claim that they are receiving is worth more than the cost basis. So again, the claim they're receiving is more than the cost basis and therefore this would be a gain scenario, but you'll see because of the returned Bitcoin and returned ETH, we can actually basically just carry that cost basis back, defer the gain, and then actually still be able to claim a loss here. So stay tuned for that. So I've condensed everything just like last time. I just put the cost basis here alongside the lost assets, and then I marked down our total claim that had that 5% markup in it, as well as the total cost basis, which is just the sum of these. And then uh, going through that scenario, based on the way that the math shook out, is we had the 2024 distributions outlined here. These are just the initial distributions, not the second distribution that was received in December. If you guys want help on how to calculate that and figure out what to do about that second distribution, we actually already made a video about this. Make sure to go check it out. We'll link it below. Uh, but this is just uh, you know, going off strictly what we have in the article, which did not account for that second distribution at that time. Um, so again, just go check out that video if you want help with that second distribution. So the question comes down to now uh, defining returned versus new Bitcoin. So in example number one, we didn't have any new Bitcoin or Ethereum, but here in example number two, we do have new Bitcoin and Ethereum. And so what do I mean by that? Well, we lost 0.25 Bitcoin and we got back 0.4 Bitcoin, so more than we lost. We lost 2.5 ETH and we got back 6.8 ETH. So we had more ETH than initially lost. Um, and so what that means is we actually have new Bitcoin and new ETH as well as some returned Bitcoin and returned ETH. So the returned amount is easy since we got back more than we lost. It's just gonna be the full amount. So 0 0.25 Bitcoin. This is what is returned to us. Now, the new Bitcoin is simply just the difference between the 0.4 and the 0.25. So pull out a calculator, you know, subtract 0.4 from 0.25 or vice versa, um, and you will get 0.158082 Bitcoin. And then we do the same thing for the ETH. 
So we lost 2.5 ETH. We got back more than that. So this full 2.5 that we lost is considered returned. And then the remaining amount, so uh, 6.8 minus 2.5, is going to be what's considered new ETH. So hopefully you followed along so far. This is a very important uh, distinction here. As I mentioned earlier, because our claim value is actually uh, greater than the, um, than the cost basis, we are in a gain scenario, although some of that claim might not be received. We'll get into that later. Um, but because of this returned Bitcoin and ETH, we can actually uh, inherit that cost basis and defer that gain if we don't sell that Bitcoin or Ethereum ultimately allowing us to realize more loss this year. So we took the returned Bitcoin and ETH that we had calculated, and it was fairly simple because it was the full amount that was returned. So we took the returned Bitcoin and returned ETH and put it here. The next step is to determine the cost basis. Like I said, when it's the full amount, it's actually very easy because you just take the full amount of cost basis. If the amount returned, like in example one, was less than what was lost, that is when you would have to go into your detailed records and make sure that the amount being returned to you is um, you know, precisely identified as opposed to just like taking an average because you'd actually have to use the tax lots. Um, and so in this example, the full amount was returned. So we just return the full cost basis. So overall, this is the total amount of cost basis that was returned. So then what we do here is we take the total cost basis that we had calculated right here and we subtract out what was returned to us. And the reason we're doing this is we want to figure out the remaining cost basis that is now going to be used in this forced liquidation for the rest of the distribution. So that new Bitcoin, that new ETH, the stock, the sale of the liquid assets, and then the likely unrecoverable category, which we'll you know, discuss more later. Um, and so this is the cost basis that will now be used in the forced liquidation calculations. Uh, and this should be pretty easy because basically like all the Bitcoin and Ethereum was returned. And so the only thing that was left was this USDC. But if you had um, you know, a bunch of other assets, it might, it might not be as simple as that. Um, so yeah, this 50,000 is what is now gonna be used for the forced liquidation moving forward. So the next step here is determining the starting percentages. And I forgot to write down the new Bitcoin and Ethereum. This was calculated earlier. Just make sure you jot down uh, the amounts that you calculated. So yeah, we have the returned Bitcoin and Ethereum and then the new Bitcoin and Ethereum. So the way that you do the starting percentages, it's different for the new Bitcoin and Ethereum, but then for the stock, illiquid asset recovery and the likely unrecoverable category, it's just those initial percentages outlined uh, you know, in the Celsius article for Coinly. But for the new Bitcoin and Ethereum, what you have to do is you have to take the new amount and then you have to divide it by the total amount received. So for Bitcoin, it would be this 0.158 Bitcoin. That's the new Bitcoin that we figured out earlier divided by the 0 0.408 Bitcoin. Same thing with the Ethereum. The new Ethereum, 4.3, divided by the total Ethereum received, 6.8. And then you multiply that by 28.95%. So roughly the claims would be paid out 28.95% in Ethereum, 28.95% in Bitcoin. There might be um, you know, slightly different weights there, but for the most part, it averages out to about 28.95%. And then that is how you get these percentages here. Again, for the stock, illiquid asset recovery, and the likely unrecoverable amounts, for the starting percentages, it's just those you know, initial percentages. But for the new Bitcoin and Ethereum, since we carved out what was returned, we also have to essentially carve that out of this percentage as well to determine our starting percentages right here. And ultimately what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these percentages to uh, calculate our final allocation percentages, which we will then take the cost basis to allocate, and that is how we will determine uh, you know, how much cost basis to allocate to the expected distributions. Now that we have the starting percentages that we just calculated, now it's time to calculate the final allocation percentages. And so essentially what we're doing here is, as you'll see, we you know the starting percentage only added up to 71.6%. So what we need to do is essentially mark up uh, proportionally all of these percentages for the allocation percentage. So how you do that, is you take the 11.2% and 
divide it by 71.6. So you just take the starting percentage and divide it by the total. So for the new Bitcoin, 11.2 divided by 71.6, new Ethereum, 18.3 divided by 71.6, so on and so forth. And this is how you get the final allocation percentages. And if you add these up, you'll see they add up to 100%. Um, and so this is what we will use now to uh, determine the cost basis that goes into uh, you know, each of these categories. And then based on the fair value of what is received in each of these categories, will determine your gain or loss compared, you know, that you take that fair value and compare it to the cost basis that is allocated to it. So now the final step here is taking the final allocation percentages that we just calculated, putting them right here, and then we are multiplying them by the cost basis. So again, this is the remaining cost basis to allocate, which we see right here, the remaining cost basis to allocate, and then we multiply it by the final allocation percentages. So now what we're getting here is this is the amount of cost basis that will be liquidated for each of these distribution categories. So this new Bitcoin that we get, we're gonna have $7,820 worth of cost basis that is part of the forced liquidation in return for whatever the fair value of the Bitcoin received was. So based on the um, you know, effective date prices of Bitcoin at that time, um, the, the forced liquidation resulted in $7,820 worth of cost basis as calculated here in return for $6,793 worth of new Bitcoin. So what that means is we had a capital loss on that forced liquidation of $1,027, okay? So we do that for all of these categories. I left these two categories uh, blank for now because, well, for one, the likely unrecoverable hasn't happened yet. We, we probably will never see distributions from that, which is why it's called likely unrecoverable. And then the illiquid asset recovery, um, we, we've gotten a partial distribution from that in 2024. Again, if you wanna see how to treat that, go check out our other video that will go over exactly how to um, you know, handle that partial distribution um, you know, based, on, you know, based on the number we calculated here. Uh, but for intents and purposes of just sticking to the example number two that we uh, you know, put together in the Coinly article, uh, this, is, this is what we end up with as our total loss. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that we would be going over a second approach to this calculation, something that is a little bit less conservative. Personally, I think it would be defendable against the IRS if it, were, you know, if it came down to an audit, simply because this category, the likely unrecoverable category, is exactly that. We are not expected, per the court, we are not expected to receive this portion of our claim back. And so I think it's a pretty defendable position to take that we are only going to allocate cost basis to what we are expected to receive back from the court uh, and, and leave this with no cost basis allocated to it. Because essentially what this means is this $14,000 or $14,500, that won't be allowed to be written off until the court proceedings finalize and it's determined no more cost basis will be allocated. So that could be years. It could be 2030 by the time that happens. So you would be sitting on this huge amount of cost basis that we're just waiting for the court to finish up with a bankruptcy, uh, which again could take years, and then finally it would be written off. So I think if you're looking for a slightly less conservative approach, what we can do is allocate just to the expected distribution. So the new Bitcoin, new Ethereum, stock, and then the illiquid asset recovery and then not allocate to the likely unrecoverable. And essentially what that's gonna do is it's gonna take this cost basis and kind of spread it across the other uh, distribution categories. And so we are going to go over that now. So now to kind of go over that, uh, that twist on things to take option number two, if you will, um, which is essentially, it's a less conservative approach to the calculation, but essentially all we've done is we have erased the uh, the likely unrecoverable category from the calculation altogether. So you'll see here that we erased it and the starting percentage total is now different. So it was 70 something, now it's 50.8% because we're just looking at the new Bitcoin, new Ethereum, stock and illiquid asset recovery. So this is what we're actually expected to get back. The stance here is that we are only allocating cost basis to what the court has determined is what we are expected to get back. We are not allocating cost basis to what we are not expected to get back. So we now take this starting percentage total and we feed it into our final allocation calculation. So again, this used to say that 70 number, 
now it's 50.8. And so each of these final allocation percentages now change. They're, they're kind of marked up a little bit, if, if you will. They've absorbed the, uh, the amount that was allocated to the likely unrecoverable. We then take those final allocation percentages and apply them here. Again, we erased that bottom, uh, that bottom line. We do the same calculation, so we multiply it by the cost basis that was remaining, the remaining cost basis to allocate, which we had written down here. We get the allocated cost basis. We, the fair value of the distributions doesn't change. All that changes now is the allocated cost basis, which is driving our capital gain or loss. So you can see in option number one, when we had that likely unrecoverable category, uh, you know, we had a substantially less of a loss that we could claim in 2024. And the reason for that, as I had just described, was that the cost basis allocated to that category is essentially not able to be written off until the court proceedings finalize and uh, it's determined no more, uh, you know, distributions would be made. Uh, you know, if, if distributions were made, we would use that cost basis to kind of reduce the gain or loss that we realize at that time. Um, or gain that we realized at that time. But like I said, the court has said we are, it's not expected for the, these distributions to be made or that portion of your claim to be paid out. And so therefore, this stance is only allocating cost basis to what is expected to be paid out. And so you can see there's a substantially larger loss that you can claim this year, or if you, know, if you have a gain, your gain would be substantially less. Um, and that's because the cost basis that was allocated to that likely unrecoverable category is now being allocated to uh, you know, ev everything else. It's kind of being spread across the other categories. So again, this is a less conservative approach. So it's very important that you talk with your CPA, your accountant, uh, go over the pros and cons of each approach, what they're comfortable with. Um, you know, we are, you know, th th we're just putting the information out there. There's essentially, you know, two stances you could take here. Um, one, if you're looking to be very conservative, very much above board and never run into any issues, do option one, allocate cost basis to the likely unrecoverable category. You won't be able to write it off as a capital loss until the court, you know, proceedings finalize. That could be years. Um, but option two, if you're willing to take on a little bit more risk, Again, I still think that this is a pretty defendable position that we're only allocating cost basis to the expected distributions, but you could take that stance and essentially take more loss this year um, or essentially allocate more cost basis to the expected distributions, which will allow you to either have a larger loss or um, you know, a, a less, less of a gain. Uh, but all in all, the, the key here is that the loss itself doesn't change, it's just when you can recognize it. So the loss would still be realized at some point in the future, uh, it's just, it's way down the line. This, the second approach allows you to take more of that loss now. And then the key note here is if you receive anything beyond, um, you know, what, beyond the claim, beyond what was expected here as outlined, uh, you know, by the court, then at that time it would just be treated as ordinary income. So not, not a capital gain, but ordinary income. Um, and you would pay tax on it at that time. But again, that's only if you're receiving, you know, assets in beyond what was expected. And that's it. So I hope everyone learned something today. If you want even more help, we actually made a very detailed course guide going over exactly how to do this in Excel and then also apply it in Coinly so that your tax software is accurately reflecting the forced liquidations that we calculated. It's very detailed. Click this, click that. I'm sharing my screen the whole time. Um, so check that out below and uh, I hope to see you there. And if you haven't checked out the Coinly article yet, definitely check that out. It's also linked below. It's authored by me. Um, and also, if you don't have Coinly or don't use a tax software, we highly recommend checking out Coinly as well. Uh, it is our preferred software here at Count on Sheep. It's very easy to use. It's got a great user interface. So check that out below. And thank you for watching. And make sure to subscribe and follow us on X for the latest Celsius updates. And as a little bonus for everyone that stayed this long, we actually have a free Discord where you can ask questions all about Celsius or you know, crypto tax in general. And myself or a team member will be happy to answer. Thank you so much and thanks for watching.